that, that target. And we said we want to hit five targets. Have you ever seen that illustration where they, where they put the sand into a, a, a bucket first, and then they put these big rocks into the, into the sand, and then nothing fits? Jamelo, have you seen that, that illustration? But when you put the sand out and you put the big rocks in first, say for instance you put those five big rocks in, and then you pour the sand out, guess what happens? Everything fits. Why? Because when you put the big rocks in first, everything fits. When you seek Jesus and his kingdom first, all these things can be added. But when Jesus is second and when Jesus is an afterthought, <laughs> nothing works. And so we're looking at five big rocks, five targets that we are aiming at. And we're saying, we're finding these targets from the words of Jesus. We're saying, Jesus, what are the major things that you emphasize? What are the things you spoke about most? We want to work them into our lives because we believe there's a lot more than just those five. But when we put them in first, we believe that everything else fits. And so our first rock was, our first target was we said, we want to be able to be with Jesus. Remember that? What was our second target? Forgiving. Thank you. Just two people. Your God. Okay, I'll preach forgiving today. Um, no, I'm just joking. Our second target was we need to forgive. Our third target was serve. Ah, now you guys are getting it. Hey, we need to serve. Why? Because as Jesus served, we're going to serve. The th fourth target, what was last week? Giving. Ah, oh, Peter, you'll remember that one. We give like Jesus gave, right? The last target before we're going to celebrate. Next weekend is celebrating. Our last target is, I believe, the one that most people struggle with. Going. Can, I, can you say going? This is one that people are like, oh, no, I'm, it's for the extroverts. It's for the evangelists. It's not for me. I'm here to say to you today that if Jesus spoke to us about going, then it must be possible for everyone to go. If Jesus, if this was one of the big things that Jesus emphasized, Justin, then this must be one of the things that he'll empower us to do. Now, most people are saying, no, 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 no. I must first, I must first get to a place where I've got my life sorted. You know, I must first be perfect before God can use me. <laughs> I'm here to say to you that Jesus found imperfect people all the time. He found the weak people all the time, and he used the weak in order to do great things. Now, some people say to me, but Mark, you don't understand. I do go, but I go this way. St. Francis of Assisi said the following. He said, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Have you ever heard that said? I don't believe this guy meant that we should only use, uh, only do actions. I believe he was saying, our lives should speak so loudly that when our mouths speak, people are like, oh, they line up with your, with your actions. Do you see that? So what happens with most people is they think, no, I don't need to say anything. I must just live right. I'm here to say to you that not one place in the Bible does it say that we should just live the gospel. It doesn't say that. It says we need to preach it. It says we need to speak it. It says Jesus actually, you'll see, we're going to share a lot of scriptures this morning. Jesus actually often said, preach, go, say, say to this, speak to them, speak, 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 speak. And I believe that God doesn't only want to use our hands and our feet, God also wants to use our mouths. Can you smile with me at that beautiful smile? Thank you so much. The three people, the other ones, are you, do you have teeth like this? Then no, you don't. Anyway. What also happens with people when it comes to going is they think that the only way you go is when you go on a tsunami with Ronka or when you go to China or when you go into deep dark Africa or when you go into the Asia or somewhere far in the sweet by and by. No, no, I'm here to say to you that it's both and. I'm here to say to you that you can go today. I'm here to say to you that Jesus does not want us Literally, he doesn't want us to disqualify ourselves just because we can't go overseas or we can't go into Africa. I'm here to say to you, you've got unsaved family that you can go to today. You've got unsaved friends, unchurched friends that you can go to today. You can go wherever you go, you can be a difference. Your, your career is a platform for missions. I'm so amazed at how most people think, no, no, no. When you are now a pastor of a church, then God can really use you. When you're a missionary out in a mud hut in Malawi, then God can really use you. 
I'm saying to you, yes, God uses missionaries in Malawi. And yes, God uses pastors. Thank the Lord for that. Otherwise, I would have a problem. But you know what I've learned? The enemy has been lying to us. Because 95% of people will never be pastors or missionaries full time. What are you going to do, 95% of God's people, what are we going to do if we don't understand that we are missionaries regardless of what, we, what, what career we have? Can you give him praise? If you have children, parents, you are a missionary to those children. If you are in a business, if you're working in a company, you're a missionary in that company. If you're a teacher, man, can we give God thanks for the teachers in our church? The teachers, man, those guys are the forefront of the missionaries in this, in this society. If you can impact people, 80% of people make a commitment to Christ before the age of 18. Teachers have a massive mission field. I want to tell you about an architect. Steve Wilson spoke about this on Friday. He said, there's this lady she, that he knows, she's an architect, and she understood that an architecture a, 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 a firm that, that, that she runs is a mission field. And so she prayed and she said, God, how can you use me? Because I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an architect, you know, I draw drawings, I design houses. <laughs> how are you going to use me? God said to her, pray while you design the houses. Pray while you design the houses. So she would pray and then she would pray when she, when she deals with the people, she would pray before she meets with them. Then she would pray that the Holy Spirit, once these houses are built, that the Holy Spirit would minister to the people in the houses. And guess what happened? She became so popular that people are like, we want to only use you. And she's like, why do you want to use us? No, we don't want to use you for the way the places look. We want to use you for the way the places feel. You make the places, the, the places you design feel different. I'm like, it's the Holy Spirit ministering to people. It's the peace of God. Isn't that awesome? Listen to this. The minute they ask her, why do your places feel different? She tells them the gospel. She tells him about Jesus. Isn't that awesome? 1 Peter 4 verse 11 says, If anyone speaks, can you say speaks? They should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that amazing? When we speak, we need to bring glory to him. When we serve, we need to bring glory to him. Everything is an opportunity. Life is an opportunity, friends. A braai on a Friday night is an opportunity. The Rugby World Cup is an opportunity. Ask Justin. We went, I met him in the video store. Can I tell him the story, Justin? I met that Justin in the video store three, four weeks ago. I go to the video store to take back a DVD. It's the Queen's Corgi. My kids wanted to watch it with me, the Queen's Corgi. I wanted to watch it with my ki kids. Have you seen the movie? I don't know. I don't know if you want to see it. But anyway. I take the Queen's Corgi back. I just quickly drop it in. You know when you take a DVD back, it's like, it's like you're already late. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to zoop, zoop, I'm out of there. Now I'm walking in and I see, hey, I remember Justin from years ago, which was we knew each other many, many years ago. And I forgot his name. I really, I forgot. Sorry, buddy, I forgot your name. So I greet him. And I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And I think, hey, but he's got a child. And I'm like, yeah, he's, but lots has happened in his life, you know. And I'm out of there. And Justin finds me on Facebook. And he says, hey, Mark, I want to tell you, when you greeted me in the video store, I experienced God. He says, I actually started feeling emotional. And I want to know, what time does your church start? On the Sunday. I'm like, can I say this? Is that in everything we do. Whether it is at the DVD store, at the pick and pay, at the engine garage, wherever we go, it's an opportunity for God to touch people, for God to, be a ble to bless people. Amen? Now, have you ever heard of a guy called Hudson Taylor? Hudson Taylor went to China many, many years ago, one of my really just inspirational uh, figures in my life. And Hudson Taylor literally left comfort and convenience, and he went to China. And, and while he was in China, more than 18,000 people committed their lives to Christ. Isn't that amazing? But while he was there, he opened the door for 800 missionaries to come in, and they started 125 schools, Christian schools, where they ministered the gospel to, people, to kids. Hudson Taylor said the following. He said, all God's giants have been weak men who did great things for God, 
because they reckoned on God being with them. Did you hear what he said? Weak men doing great things. Why? Not because I'm great, but my great God is with me. My great God goes with me to the DVD store. My great God goes with me to my school. My great God goes with me to the hospital. My great God goes with me wherever I go. I'm here to say to you that the greatest missionary that ever walked the planet, the greatest missionary that ever walked the planet, I need a drum roll for that. That's how serious I am. <laughs> Sorry, thank you for the people. I thought I was going to get one here. Awesome. The greatest missionary. You know who he is? Jesus Christ. He was in heaven. Everything was going his way. Thousands upon thousands of angels worshiping him. Jesus had glory. He had, he had everything. He was, the, he was enthroned. But there was mankind. And he left heaven. He left convenience. He left what he knew. Tabojo. He left what was easy. And he came and he became one of us. So that he can save all of us. Come on, give him praise. And Jesus said, it's not the sick that need a doctor. It's, the, it's, it's not the healthy that need a doctor. It's the sick. He said, I came, Luke chapter 5, verse 32, not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I came to seek and save the lost. Jesus Christ, if, you want, if you're going to be like Jesus, <laughs> you're going to go like Jesus. Hey, I, and if I look at Jesus' life, I don't see him having arranging outreaches, even though I think it's important for us to arrange outreaches. When I look at Jesus' life, I see him living a missional life. I think outreaches ignite mission, but I think mission is who we are. It's not what we do. Amen? So you might say, but Mark, what is, where does that leave us? Just, think, just imagine, if 500 of City O'Neill's adults, we have about 800 adults, 500 of our adults, there's 700 seats in this room yet this morning, 700 and something seats. If 500 said we're going to bless one person a week, you know how many people we're going to touch this year? 25,000 people. Not once a day, one in seven. Lord, just give me one person this week that you can touch through me. Just one person that I can just pause, the waitress at the, at the, at the coffee shop, just one person I can pause and say, I just want to share a word with you. I just want to encourage you. I went to a coffee shop once, and the owner of the coffee shop, and I had a friend with me, and uh, literally the friend looked at the owner of the coffee shop, and he said to the owner, it was, um, it was Peter, Peter Brown. He, he, he said to the friend, uh, he gave the guy at the coffee shop just an encouragement, and the guy at the coffee shop says to him, the owner said to him, you won't believe how much that meant to me. Thank you for being obedient to God. I'm here to say to you, I'm here to say to you, we've been given a gift. We've been given a gift. And this gift, this gift is the life of Jesus Christ. This gift is freedom from sin. This gift is freedom from judgment. This gift is the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation. This gift is love. We've been given a gift. And you know what we do? We walk around like this. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> And we hide the gift. We withhold the gift that God wants to give through, give through us. Luke chapter 24, 47 says, And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Repentance and forgiveness. I want to ask you, have you received forgiveness? And have you repented of your sins? Because I believe that people have not, have not received it, they cannot give it. And if you're far from God here this morning, this morning you need to receive forgiveness and you need to repent. What does it mean to repent? It's to turn, this is actually the, the word metanoia, it's a great Greek word metanoia. It's to turn 180 degrees to change my mind. To change from what I used to believe to what I now believe. To, to turn my back on sin and to turn my face to God. That's repentance. It's to go back to the high call of God. It's to repent. I'm here to say to you that Christians need to repent. Unbelievers need to repent, and Christians also need to repent. 
You know why? Because we put our hope in other stuff. And as I'm repenting, as I'm repenting from putting my hope in, in the government, guess what happens? I've got a testimony to share. Uh, you know what, my buddy? I used to put my hope in the ANC. Praise God, man. ANC, EFF, DAP, AFF, Sari, Marisa, whatever. I don't care what. I used to put my hope in them. Now I put my hope in Jesus. I have a testimony. I used to put my hope in my boss. Now I put my hope in Jesus. I used to put my hope in the economy. Now I put my hope in Jesus. I put, used to put my hope in, 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 in my clients. Now I put my hope in Jesus. I used to put my hope in my husband, ladies. Now I put my hope in Jesus. I used to put my hope in my kids are happy with me. And now, then now, now I put my hope in Jesus. Christians need to learn how to speak about what God is doing in their lives every single day. You might say, but Mark... <laughs> What about my friends? I'm here to say that everyone needs Jesus. Everyone. Everyone needs Jesus. I'm, I'm thinking about myself. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I know that I'm, I'm missing the beauty of Jesus daily is I stop sharing his beauty. If I don't share him, I'm asking, am I beholding him? Romans 3 verse 10 says, there's no one righteous, not even one. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Friends, people in my workplace are walking around with a death sentence over them. People in my family are walking around with a death sentence over them. People in my, in my friendship groups are walking around with a death sentence over them. People at school, they're walking around with a death sentence over them. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm like, Lord, why am I so blind not to see that these people need the gift? They need it. You know why? I forgot that I received it. If you're spending time with Jesus every day, if people come to me, they say, no, I can quote the Bible, I can quote all the scriptures. I'm like, 100%, please quote more scriptures for me. I want to see it outlived in how many people are you sharing this with. And now I'm not saying you need to set an outreach program. I'm saying you're touching lives all the time. You're going to spa to pay your groceries. Are you taking a moment to just share the love of God? Now, some of us feel the pressure. Now you sit there, Mark, I shouldn't have come today. This is a difficult Sunday to come. I should have come last week. This is the words of Jesus. Can I share the words of Jesus with you? The words of Jesus is in Matthew 28, verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I'm here to say to you, that just before Jesus gave them the Great Commission, what did he do? He revealed himself to them, and they worshipped him. And remember where we started. We said Jesus always says come before he says go. You know why it's hard for people to go? Because they're not coming. I know not, not of you, but there in Joburg, that's where the people struggle. Friends, in Isaiah chapter 6, we see Isaiah. It's, he says, I saw the Lord. Can you say the Lord? He didn't see some other angel. He saw the Lord. He said his train of his ro robe filled the temple. And then he heard his voice saying, whom shall I send? And he said, here I am, Lord. Send me. Isaiah didn't go because it was his duty. He didn't go because people were in need. He went because he saw the Lord. Worship unlocks mission. The reason why we don't go is because we don't worship. Oh, you're squat for me van ochtend. Can I say these things? Is it the truth? Yes. Now, I'm trusting that you cut to the heart this morning, and then, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get empowered by him to do this. Because he's not going to ask us to do this without him. Because watch here. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. His red letters, Jesus' words is, if I ask, ask you to do something, you're not going to do it in your authority. You're going to do it in my authority. Then he says, make disciples of all nations. Go. He says, go. Go. Did he say, call them? Or did he say, stay? Did he say, go. 
He said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. I believe that Jesus is with us when we go. Jesus is with us when we go. I want to show you this um, on a chair. Have you ever heard of a guy called Reinhard Bonnke? Reinhard Bonnke, yeah, I'm enjoying his book. We, a lot of us are reading his book. Reinhard Bonnke said this, his life book. Listen to this. I love this about Reinhard Bonnke. Now, Reinhard Bonnke was a young German boy at the age of 10, radically born again for Jesus. And listen to what happened. He said, God, send me to Africa. And then he came down to Africa and then worked his way up, to Afri- up into Africa. And they've got 70 million decision cards for Jesus. 70 million under his preaching. 70 million people made decisions for Jesus. I think that's amazing. So Reinhard Bonnke said the following. He says, God always works with the workers, and he moves with the movers, but he does not sit with the sitters. I'm here to say to you today, no, I mean, don't hear what he's not saying. He's, God's always with you. He never leaves you nor forsake you. I'm just saying this, it's God's signs and wonders, and God's Support is not with people that are passive. Because God doesn't back passivity. God, God doesn't get behind complacency. God gets behind people that say, here I am, use me. God gets behind this people saying, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. I want to make a difference, God. And to set you free today is making a difference. I'm so thankful for the guys that went yesterday. We had a whole group of people went to the mall yesterday to reach out. I'm so thankful for that, but I'm here to say to you, what about being faithful year in and year out, day in and day out at your workplace and praying and trusting God for life change there? Can I tell you, Steve Wilson tells another story. I was so blessed to meet him the week that I'm preaching on this. He said this to us. He said, he said we had this one lady. She said, God used me at my school, but in the school, they don't believe in any miracles. They, they, they're very anti Miracles, the move of God, they cessationists. So what happened was, she said, okay, God, I want to be used by the school, uh, in the school, by you in the school. So she decided to go to school early before anyone else gets there. And what she would do, she would walk the hallway praying, praying for the teachers, praying for the, the students, praying for the, the, the management of the school, praying for those working at the school, and praying that God would touch people in the school. For more than a year, she does this, and she sees nothing. See, we all want to tell those stories of she quickly decided in the next day and then pa 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 and then da 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 and I know. What about more than a year of praying every day and you see nothing? But she's positioning herself. She's saying, I'm here. I'm a missionary at the school. I'm called by God to be here. I'm teaching. I'm impacting the children, but I'm also here to be salt and light wherever I go. I'm here. I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going for Jesus to work. I'm not going to work for money. God can get money to you any other way. If you're still working for money, I'm asking you, please stop. Money is not worth your time and your energy. Jesus is worth for that. If he gave you that job, I'm asking you today to view that job differently. So she gets to the job, and as she's busy praying, she comes to the end, and she hears the, the wife of the chairman of the school saying that she's got this autoimmune disease that she's been struggling with now for many, many, many months, and they can't find anything to help her. She's so sick that she's seriously struggling. And the lady overhears it, and she says, she asked the Lord, can I pray for them? And the Lord gives her the release. And guess what she does? She pr- asked him, can I please pray for you? Now, here's what I've learned. Steve said this. We need to learn how to pray short prayers. Because otherwise, they're not going to ask you again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, yes, glory in the house. (sighs) People are going to be like, jeez. I'm here to say to you that God can answer a 30-second prayer the same same way he can answer a 30-minute prayer. 
Can I get an, a witness? Amen. She prays a few seconds. She prays a few seconds. Darren, you know what happened? As she prays, this lady senses something. She gets miraculously healed in the hallway of a school. Come on. All of a sudden, she's, people are open to hear what she has to say. <laughs> Lord, help us. Amen. Let me give you some scriptures. Would you like some scriptures? Jesus' words, Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. John G. Lake, have you ever heard of a guy called John G. Lake? He was a wealthy, wealthy business guy in the States. Sold everything he had, gave it away, and took a, a ship, got tickets on a ship to, to come down to South Africa in the early 1900s, 1902, run right about there. And in five years' time, thousands upon thousands of salvations took place with him and his team, and they planted 625 churches in five years' time. Now, here's what I wanted to say. That was John G. Lake. That's not Mark Bailey. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's not Jan Geldnes. That's not Tumelo. That's not Billy. That's not Kennedy. That's not one of us. We need to have our own story. Don't try and be someone else. Hello? You know we put condemn you know why you get condemned? Because you try and reach out like Ron and Bonke reached out. You try and reach out like John G. Lake did or Smith Wigglesworth did. No, no. You read their story to be inspired to say, God, if you can do it for them, you can do something special with me. John G. Lake said the following. He said, if the church ever succeeds in doing which, that which God purposes, we should do it. It can only be when, listen to this, it can only be when we enter into that divine compassion of the Son of God. Listen to this, friends. I felt the Lord arrest me, and he said to me, Mark, the reason why people are struggling to reach out, and the reason why they're struggling to reach out to their family and their friends is they've lost the compassion of the Son of God. They've lost the heart, that secretary of yours, she needs you to, to see her like God sees her. That boss of yours, you need, you, he needs you to see him like Jesus sees him. Those, those children in your class, they're difficult, Sarah, I know, but they, you, they, God wants you to see them like He sees them. God wants you to see the price He paid for them. God wants you to see how much He loves them. God wants you to see how much you care, He cares for them. He cares, He cares for them. If you can get that compassion in your heart from Jesus, not from a man, no man can give you the, the compassion that Jesus has for His people. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just sensing his compassion. We need to, my prayer is, God, give me your heart for these people. If someone gives their life to Christ, I'm, I can't go to the video stop, shop, Dustin, Justin, and say, oh, well, whatever, it was just all Justin. There's a price paid for that man. Someone paid a price for him. He's valuable. He says, do not imprison Christ in you. Let him live. Let him manifest himself. Let him find vent through you. Friends, it's not the great suggestion, it's the great commission. John 20 verse 21 says, peace be with you. Watch this. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, Jesus said. Jesus says now, I am sending you. I'm talking to the nurse Sunet and others, you are going to that hospital on a mission from on high. As the Father sent Jesus, so Jesus is sending you. Trevor, you're going to that business on a mission, a heavenly mission. As the Father sent Jesus, listen friends, the Father sent Jesus. Now Jesus, in the same way, is sending you and me. Wow, I'm talking to the teacher. I'm talking to the domestic worker. Can I talk to the domestic workers? The Lord, I'm praying that they're watching on, and they're coming to our church. Can we pray for more domestic workers to come to our church? Can we pray for that? I'm praying for more domestic workers. You know, friends, domestic workers have powerful influence. They're coming into people's space, and they can be the light right there. I'm talking to the domestic worker. I'm saying you are on a mission from on high. Amen? 
sales representatives. Oh, I'm not a rep. Really? God has called you to be a powerful witness for Him in your company with those clients. You're meeting people all the time. I've spoken to David already. So David is, is a medical practitioner. He said to us many a times, I pray and I practice. We can't just practice. We've got to pray and practice. You're not just fixing cars. You're praying and you're fixing. You're not just selling copiers and, and all sorts of stuff. You're praying and you're doing it. Amen? Now you might say, but Mark, <laughs> I don't have the power. I want to tell you this testimony. Can I tell you the testimony about this sales rep? The sales rep was, was, was just a normal guy like you and me. But he was on fire for Jesus, and his boss knew this. And his boss could see the, the fruit on his life. And, and they were then, basically what happened was, they were at this national convention where all the sales representatives, all the guys from all over the country, more than 1,000 people got together. I think it was 1,600 people, but I can't remember the number. Got together to be at this conference. And his boss called him and said to him, I would like for you to share your testimony in front of all these people and to tell them the gospel. Now, this sales rep was just being faithful. Now, don't think the boss is going to ask you if you're not doing your work. I don't want to hear what you have to say if I can't see it. Friends, a wise man once said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People know when we don't care. Amen? So this guy shares his story. He shares his personal testimony. And then guess what he does? He shares the gospel. And more than 100 people from all over the country in the United States say, put their hands up and they say, I want to start following Jesus. At a sales convention. Not in a church building. At a sales convention. Can you give Jesus praise for that? That's amazing. We have this lie that the enemy says people only get saved in the, build, in the four walls of the church building. I thank God they get saved here. But just imagine, if you understand, I am a missionary chosen by God. My grandkids are my mission field. My children, my parents, my family, my friends, my work colleagues, my, 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 my fellow students, they are my mission field. Can you imagine what God, what God could do? You say, but Mark, I don't have the power. I'm here to say to you, you've got the power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, but you will receive power. Can you say power? Power to be what? Witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, you get power to be a witness. I've often, I've often felt, yo, I don't have enough, I don't have enough in myself. And God said to me, no, you've got the Holy Spirit. Brent Brading was telling this, this story about this old lady. And she was, and the robber came to this old lady. Have you ever heard the story? If you were at ISM, you would know the story. And this lady, every morning, she would just say, Lord, reveal the lion of Judah to me. I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna know Jesus more as the lion of Judah, the lion that roars over me. And this robber came, and he wanted to assault her, and he wanted to rob from her. And then he, then he ran to the police. The police was there, and the robber ran away from her. And the robber said, the police is like, what? And the robber goes to the police, and he says, please help me. And the police is like, I'm not going to help you. You try to rob that lady. And he says, why didn't, what, what happened? The guy goes, did you see the lion that was standing right next to her? I don't know. I can't explain it. It's a testimony. But I, I can believe that God will sometimes do things that are out of our norm because he's with us. He's with us. Amen? Now you might say, but Mark, I can't change lives. It's true. We can't change lives. It's my job to love. It's my job to care. It's the Holy Spirit's power to change a life and to heal a broken heart. Amen? Amen? Just before I pray, this morning I feel like God wants to give you two things. Can, can you take two things with you? Two things you're going to take with you. These two things. Number one, I want to ask you to take your testimony. Because it says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Listen to this. These two things, I believe, are vital when it comes to going. And I'm going to ask the band to come to the front. But these two things are vital when it comes to going. Number one, the blood of the lamb. 
I want you to know that you know that you know that the enemy's death sentence over people's lives is cured and is annihilated by the blood of the Lamb. The price that Jesus paid on the cross is still enough for us today. His blood speaks a better word. And I want to ask you to meditate on how you've been set free and then also remember how he paid for their lives with his blood. Is that okay? Secondly, learn how to tell your testimony. It's a powerful weapon. If I ask most Christians today, tell me your testimony, they're like, "Mm, I don't really know what to say. Have you written down your testimony? Try and rehearse it within two to three minutes. Because again, you will only were, you know, back in the day, 1943, you know, when we were just still young and was it No, but people don't have time to hear all those stories. If you're in pick and pay in the aisle, can you in two or three minutes tell someone, I was lost, but now I'm found. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I one was blind, but now I can see. Can you, can you ask God to help you to put your testimony in such a small way that you don't become one of those that are just a, it's just a sitter, but that you're a mover, that you're a worker. Can you stand with me? I would like to pray for us.